Hey y'all, welcome to Camira's Kitchen. Today I'm gonna to show you a meal that I recently made for my family when we all got together. My siblings were in town and so baby, we was eating well. I did my Cajun ribs, some deviled eggs with bacon, some ranch potato salad, and some homemade baked beans. Have you ever made homemade baked beans from the scratch? Honey, if you have not done it, then you are going to love this recipe because it is so easy, but it is super flavorful. Now one thing I don't tend to like about baked beans from the store is that they are just so full of sugar that I feel as if the flavor of the beans just gets covered up. So what I'm going to do today is start off by sauteing about five strips of thick cut bacon. While that's sauteing, I am going to rinse off these navy beans. That is actually the beans that baked beans are. Now you can make the navy beans from dried in your pressure cooker if you want this, you know, really from scratch, from scratch, okay? Um, but I think that making the sauce is good enough, all right? Once the bacon is done, I'm gonna take it out, but leave all of the fat. And if you don't do bacon, just feel free to skip this step and use butter. I'm then gonna saute an onion in this until it has started to brown and then add half of a bell pepper. You want that brownness on these vegetables because that is gonna add some natural sweetness and depth of flavor to your beans. Then I'm putting in one, <laughs> baby uno, clove of garlic. Some of y'all are just garlic beans, but baked beans don't need to be overpowered by the garlic, okay? There are other flavors out there. Then I'm gonna add an eight ounce can of tomato sauce as well as a cup of water. Now pull out that molasses that you had in your cabinet for about 10 years. Okay, you know you'll use it at Christmas time, but we are gonna use it today. Okay, I'm putting in three tablespoons of molasses, some seasonings, as well as a bit of vegetable bouillon. That vegetable bouillon is essentially gonna turn this into vegetable broth, as well as about a fourth of a cup of maple syrup. If you do not have maple syrup, you can use honey or just a little bit of brown sugar. I'm also going to add in some mustard. You can use yellow mustard or Dijon, and I'm gonna mix this together and just season this with salt and pepper to my taste. I really wanted that smoky flavor to come out, so I added one chipotle pepper in adobo. Don't add the whole can or else your baked beans are gonna burn up everybody's mouth, okay? Just one is enough. You could use liquid smoke instead, but I'm gonna be honest, I don't really play with liquid smoke like that. It just don't agree with my palate, okay? Then I'm going to add in those bacon pieces and really you got to taste your food. So I felt like it needed a little subtle, you know, warm flavor. So I decided to put in some allspice berries and then a bay leaf. I added in all of my rinsed navy beans and just gently combined it. Let me know in the comments if you have ever made homemade baked beans. Doing it this way is very easy, but I will tell you that the flavor is truly different. It is richer, there's just so much more depth to it, whereas I feel a lot of the ones in the store are just super sweet. Now, while I have made them on this channel, this is my personally preferred way to make it, and my family absolutely love these beans. I'm gonna cook these beans at 350 degrees for one hour. However, if you are cooking some other protein at 350 degrees or lower, maybe 275 or 300, you can just stick these beans in there with them as well and they can cook at the same time. The longer you cook them, the richer the sauce is going to taste. This would also be a great recipe for a slow cooker. You could add everything into your slow cooker on low and cook this for about two to two and a half hours and the sauce would be delicious. These are my beans after an hour. Of course, you can see the sauce has thickened, but the flavor is so intense that I just love it. I also have a pork-free, beefy version of these homemade beans. If you wanna see that recipe, please comment below and let me know. Are you gonna make this recipe? Ribs are such a juicy and expensive and flavorful cut of meat that I think it's unfortunate that we often just limit ribs to 
barbecue. It's like you get some ribs and the only thing people want to do is slap some barbecue sauce on them. Now, of course, you got the pros, but baby, I ain't no barbecue and pro, okay? So I'm going to show you just another way you can prepare ribs that doesn't involve having to use a classic barbecue sauce that's really flavorful and I feel like it just complements the spare ribs really well. We are going to make an oven Cajun hot honey spare rib. Of course, if you have a grill or a smoker, feel free to use this recipe in one of those and then ship me some, baby, because I do like me some smoked ribs. Honey, yes, amen, but I don't have that. So I'm gonna start off by prepping the ribs. I'm gonna remove the membrane and that extra piece of fat that is on the ribs. Now, I was watching a lot of guys on YouTube prep some spare ribs and they didn't remove a ton of the fat, so I didn't do that. But then, after I cooked the ribs, I realized they were doing it on the smoker, so that's probably why they left more of the fat. So if you're doing these in the oven like me, I would just trim off the excess fat on the back and on the top of the ribs. Now to make a easy rub, I'm gonna combine some brown sugar, some Cajun seasoning, garlic and herb seasoning, pepper, MSG, and you can do salt to your own taste. If you want these a lot spicier, you could put in some cayenne pepper, but my salt-free Cajun seasoning had dried habanero pepper, so they already had a kick. I'm gonna put on some smoked paprika, and then this is a very easy, sweet, but spicy Cajun rub. This rack of ribs is a big baby. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it down on a whole baking sheet with some foil, and then I'm going to dry off the ribs just so that the spices will stick a bit better. I'm also going to dry off the bottom of my ribs. Then I'm going to add some yellow mustard just to help the spices stick. But honestly, I really just love the flavor that mustard gives the pork. But if you really just hate mustard, you could skip this step or you can use a tiny bit of olive oil instead. You wanna rub the mustard over the front and the back. Then I'm going to spread on all of this spice rub. It may look like it's a lot of seasoning, but remember that two tablespoons of brown sugar has just bulked it up. This will not be over seasoned. Plus, these ribs can take a lot of seasoning, okay? Let me know in the comments if you prefer to use spare ribs or baby back ribs. I typically use baby back ribs, but because spare ribs were a little cheaper, I just thought I would give them a try. I think I like baby back ribs a bit more because they're a bit more trimmed up, but let me know what you think. I'm gonna start off by cooking these uncovered at 275 degrees for one hour. I tried to do it uncovered first because somebody online said that it would develop sort of a crust on the pork more. I don't really know if it made a difference, so honestly, you could start off covering the ribs and cooking them at 275 for about three hours instead of doing like me. After one hour, I went in and I basted the ribs just in its own juices to make sure it wasn't gonna be dry. Then I covered them up and I cooked them for an additional two hours. Even though ribs have to cook forever, the good thing about them is that they are very hands-off. You don't gotta babysit them, so I can appreciate that. When it was about 15 minutes before my ribs were gonna be done, I started making this hot honey sauce. I'm gonna go in with half of a stick of unsalted butter. I'm gonna allow that to melt and then I'm putting in two cloves of crushed garlic and some thyme. I'm not using minced garlic because I don't want the garlic to burn when I put this sauce in the oven. Then I'm going to add three tablespoons of honey and allow this to thicken for about a minute or so. Afterwards, I will put in a fourth of a cup of hot sauce. If you want it spicier, you could even add a half of a cup of hot sauce or just like a habanero hot sauce instead. I'll let this simmer for about 30 seconds and then I'll remove the garlic and the thyme leaves. At this point, my ribs have been cooking for three hours total and they are nice and tender. Okay, they are nice and tender. I am going to baste them just in their own juices, and then I'm gonna put on the sauce. 
I want this hot honey sauce to brown the ribs and caramelize. So I'm gonna put the ribs back into the oven and allow them to cook uncovered at 425 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes. You wanna watch it because while you want this to brown and caramelize, you definitely don't want it to burn. And there's a thin line between burn and caramelize, okay? So just make sure you look out for it. Once these ribs are done, not only are they going to be tender, but they are going to be very flavorful. It really adds something new other than doing your classic barbecue ribs. Let me know if you enjoyed this recipe idea. I loved it, my family loved it. Are you gonna try this recipe? guys ever tried a ranch potato salad we are going to put a nice spin on your classic potato salad today with by adding this ranch flavor and it is so good so y'all i have some potatoes here and i'm going to be adding a full tablespoon of salt as well as half of a tablespoon of chicken bouillon powder for some flavor then I'm going to be putting in four eggs. Now you can use as many eggs as you want. You know, if you want a little more on the egg salad side, you know, add five or six, okay? It's whatever you like. I am going to let this boil for about seven minutes and then I will actually go in there and remove the eggs because we don't want them to get way overdone. Um, I'm also going to go in and check the smaller potatoes. I realized that those were actually pretty much ready. And so I took out the little potatoes, but of course the big ones, you know, the big babies, they gonna need to take a little longer to get ready. So I actually let those go for about 15 minutes. Once they were done, I let everything cool off. I rinsed them in cold water and I let everything sit in the fridge for about an hour to get cold. This is actually something great to do overnight and prep for making your potato salad because everything's cool. That way when you season it, you know exactly how everything is going to taste before you serve it. If you make your potato salad warm, then the seasoning you'll end up having to adjust it once it gets cold. Now my last egg, I'm just gonna chop into slices and I end up just saving that for presentation purposes, just to put on the top, you know, so people know what's up in there, okay? So these potatoes are very easy to peel once they have cooled down, especially and easy to handle. So I just pick that skin off and then you can just cut off any part that is bad. Of course, since we didn't peel them beforehand, you just have to be on the lookout for that now. I am gonna cut them into fairly, you know, medium large-ish chunks. I don't wanna cut them too small because remember they're already soft. And so we are not trying to over mix them and start dibble dabbling into the mashed potato realm okay that would be bad so once i have my potato pieces cut up i am going to start assembling my potato salad now a little something different about this one i'm using a mixture of mayonnaise and sour cream and this body of ranch is not super salty so i'm going to end up using in total about three tablespoons. However, if you use like the a different brand that is saltier, then you may need to adjust that. So don't add any salt until you have really tasted it with this ranch seasoning mix. I'm gonna go, of course, add in pepper as well as mustard. And I'm also going to put in some sweet relish that's gonna balance out the ranch and a little honey. Now look, don't come for me. Talking about honey don't go in potato salad, okay? You got corn syrup in the sweet relish and that's okay. So adding some honey into the potato salad is okay too. I'm going to adjust this to taste. I'm gonna add a little more ranch, a little more mustard, and I'm gonna add some celery as well as some green onions, and then I will mix in the eggs when it is to my taste. Now, I'm gonna give you some estimated measurements in the description box, but the real cooks know when you start messing with them potatoes, you know, them potatoes can be bland as cardboard, you know what I'm saying? You gotta just do stuff to taste. You can't just go by what the guys say, okay? So you just got to adjust. Just like you see me doing here, I added a little more ranch. I ended up putting in a little more sweet relish. I realized with this ranch potato salad, a little, a little bit of extra sweetness, you know, not too much, but just a little bit was really nice. And I ended up adding salt, a little MSG. Okay, don't tell nobody though. But if you get that ranch seasoning that is the restaurant style one, that one actually already has MSG in it and is actually saltier than the other ones. So just really watch your salt. Let me know if you're going to try this ranch potato salad or if you've ever done a recipe like this before. 
Ooh, baby, have you ever had some bacon and chive devil eggs? The bacon adds a nice little saltiness. There's a good flavor from the herb. Y'all, this is so good. Now, today I tried something new. I've been hearing online about how you can make boiled eggs in the Instant Pot, and today I decided to try it for the first time. Multiple sources said that you're supposed to pressure cook this for five minutes, then natural pressure release for five minutes, and then let it sit in ice water for five minutes. However, I just felt that letting it natural pressure release for five minutes was gonna be too long. So I pressure cooked the eggs for five minutes and then I did a quick release. I then took them out and put them in a bowl and I ran them under cold water until they were completely cool. Y'all, my freezer don't have an ice machine, so the ice thing just wasn't gonna work for me, okay? I had really mixed feelings about how these boiled eggs turned out. So for one, I can say that they were super easy to peel. And this is a great method if you wanna cook a lot of eggs at one time. However, you will see coming up, when I peeled them, the eggs were slightly tannish, which I couldn't explain. And it seemed that they were just a little bit overcooked because they had that gray line around the outside. So I'm glad that I didn't end up letting them natural pressure release for five minutes or else they would have been way overcooked. However, when I tasted the eggs, they tasted just fine. So I don't really understand why the color changed. If you have ever made hard boiled eggs in the Instant Pot, please give me advice, okay? I would love to know how you do it because clearly the five, five, five method is gonna work for me. If you've ever done like three minutes or something like that, let me know what your results were like. Even though the whites had this slightly tannish color, they did still taste fine. So I still proceeded on with the recipe, but I definitely got to try this again. If you don't want to make your eggs in the Instant Pot, the way I always make them on the stove is to put my eggs in a pot, bring the water up to a rigorous boil, and then let them sit for 10 to 12 minutes, moved from the burner, and then cool them off with cool water. And that gives you perfect boiled eggs every time. I'm gonna make the filling in my food processor. So I'm gonna add my egg yolks as well as about two tablespoons of sweet relish, about a half a tablespoon of mustard. And in total, I used about three tablespoons of mayo, a little bit of Creole seasoning just to my taste. I like to add some hot sauce as well. Not only does it add just a little bit of spice, but I like the vinegar um, taste that it adds to the filling. After I blended this for about 30 seconds, I took my spatula and went around the side. I felt like it needed more mayo. So really, you know, with deviled eggs, you just have to feel things out. My mom really put me on to making a filling that was a little bit more stiff. I usually did a really loose one, but she was right. The stiff one is really tasty. Now, I do not have a piping bag. Okay, honey, I don't even be messing with like cake decorating and things like that. But baby, y'all know what we do got. You'll know we got Ziploc. Okay, and today I actually got the name brand. Look at me, because I used to be having, you know, that great value, but you know, I ain't mad at it. I'm going to add in my filling. I'm going to twist the bag, and then that's going to push all the filling to a corner. In order to pipe, you just snip the corner, and then you are good to go. I have all of my egg whites here, and I am just going to start filling them up in a little twirl design. You know, I'm just feeling fancy today. I do love those deviled eggs when they have like those little star tips, and those are super pretty, but y'all, this is just for the family, so I'm not even worried about that. While my eggs were cooking, I had some bacon cooking in the air fryer. I cooked two slices of bacon at 350 for about 10 minutes. If you don't want to do the pork, of course, you could stop here. You can fill it up with your filling and then just add some chive and a little bit of paprika, and that's perfect. But I cut up some bacon bits, and I added those on top as well. Another good alternative to pork in this recipe would be to saute up some medium shrimp with a little bit of Creole seasoning. Shrimp deviled eggs are super delicious and tasty. And at that point, I feel like we're making it like a little meal. I mean, you got all this protein and stuff. Baby, I don't even need no main course. You know, when I got that, I'm good to go. I'm adding on my chive here just to make everything look cute. And y'all, this is some delicious deviled eggs. Let me know if you are going to make this recipe.
No. All right, guys, I hope you all make this delicious meal. You guys know that I love you and Jesus loves you. He is the savior of the world. And I just appreciate all of you for supporting my channel. I will see you next time at Camira's Kitchen. Goodbye and God bless.